we're going to meditate for about 10 minutes and I'll time is in a run time, so it's a little brighter than usual. But here we go. Let's close our eyes. Meditation means a technique for transcending. And that's very different from watching your thoughts or focusing on a candle or something. It's a technique that allows the mind to settle inward, allows awareness to open up to its deepest, truest nature. And I think that's probably a pretty universal definition of meditation that most people would go along with. A means of allowing human awareness to open to its most expansive, most fundamental truest nature. So my name is Jeannie Ball and I'm actually one of the teachers of Transcendental Meditation here at the Asheville TM Center. And I teach all the women. And I came here uh, 2005 with my husband and I love Asheville. It's great. There are a lot of people who are just naturally interested in meditation, so it's not a lot of uh, introduction you need to do for them because they're, they're already very happy about meditation. I think everyone intuitively feels that there is an easier way to approach life in a way that's more supportive and uh, more blissful. And they search for that, and that's just human nature. There's more people learning TM now than have since the 70s. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, it was this widespread cultural phenomenon. There were like 70,000 or more people every month learning just in the U.S. And then it kind of tapered off, and, and there's a lot of different reasons why. But now there's, there's a rising wave of interest, once again, that we're seeing. And it's for all completely different reasons. Now it's because... There's so much scientific research that's been done over the past 40 years that it's just so crystal clear that you know, for, for good health, for not just peace of mind and, and inner happiness and all that, but just for health reasons alone, it needs to be right in there with like good diet and exercise, meditation. That's the third component. I've been meditating now for, um, gosh, 12, 13 years. And... Um, I've uh, really quite instantly started to feel a huge difference in um, all areas of my life. I grew up in Asheville and I uh, lived here back in the 60s and 70s and I started meditating when I was about 16 years old. I was a student at Asheville High School. And I got into it um, because I'd always had an interest in inner development and spiritual growth and all that. But I, uh, I kind of questioned everything that I had been taught. I grew up in a religious uh, atmosphere. I went to a, a Christian school. And I learned a lot of good stuff. And, and it, I think it was good for me. But the one thing that, that kept occurring to me is that, you know, I think that there's more to life to experience and to know, and especially with spiritual development, that perhaps it's not all supposed to be just a matter of faith and believing in something and that maybe later on someday you'll you'll have some fulfilling religious experience but not on this earth in this life I thought well I actually think there is a lot to, to know and to to grow into in this life spiritually to know your own full potential as a human being and so I was seeking beyond what I was I was taught in school when I started it I was fairly desperate you know, I had done the drinking, I had done the drugs, and I had done, uh, you know, I was a musician, I am a musician, and, you know, um, I'm into altered states in general. Um, and nothing, no, that would just sustain for a brief amount of time. This is a lot more fundamental. It affects everything you do. And it's, yeah. It's, it's really 
far better than those kinds of highs and those kinds of, you know, reaching out for something substantial about why we're here and what we're doing here. Most people are trying meditation these days and many of them are dissatisfied with meditation. They say, you know, it's too hard for them to clear their mind of thoughts or um, they want to go deeper, and they've heard about how effective transcendental meditation is. They, they find that the research is, gives them more confidence that it's going to work for them. So a lot of times they come saying, well, I'm not sure if I can meditate. I've tried, but I have a hard time clearing my mind of thoughts. And I always tell them, um, you don't have to clear your mind of thoughts to practice meditation. And in fact, having a busy mind is a healthy mind because that means you're, you have a natural interest in life and the mind is always moving around and busy because it's looking for more satisfaction. So in Transcendental Meditation we don't control the mind, we satisfy it. And the deeper, more transcendent layers of the mind are actually more absorbing and more charming. So given a technique that allows you to dive within, the mind will just go there without any trying to control the mind or, or remove thoughts from the mind. It, the mind will transcend thoughts, go beyond thoughts naturally. I remember I was riding down uh, Merriman Avenue in the back of a little Volkswagen. My sister was driving, her boyfriend was in the front of the car. And they were talking, I was reading a book, I was reading a downbeat magazine, I was really into music. And they were talking about brain waves. And I remember putting my magazine down and leaning forward and saying, what are you guys talking about? And uh, my friend Ted, who was my sister's boyfriend, looked back at me and he just said, Transcendental Meditation. And I just listened to the sounds of those words and I just thought, hmm, I'm going to do that. That sounds like, that's what I've been looking for. I mean, it just sounded right. Transcendental, I mean, beyond, you know, I didn't really know what it meant. And then meditation, I thought, yeah, that's what I want. And so, as soon as I heard those words, and I listened a little more about their talk about how it creates alpha waves in the brain, and I thought that was neat. And so I, uh, I went to an introductory lecture over at UNCA shortly after that, and I heard this, this talk. And uh, I, I was, you know, only 16 years old. I didn't understand everything that was, that was being said, but I remember there's this one word that the teacher kept using time and time again. And, and I'd never heard that word before, but I knew that there was something about this guy, and it had something to do with this word he kept using. And, and the, the, when I say there's something about him, there was just sort of an air about him. It was really soft. It was kind of something expansive, like he really knew what he was talking about from experience. And it had something to do with this word, which was unboundedness. He kept talking about unbounded awareness. And I thought, yeah, now, that's... That's this quality that's about him. He feels like he's unbounded. There's some state of freedom he's speaking from. And so I thought, that's what I want. I went to a traditional college for my first two years of college and did the party thing and the sorority thing and had a lot of fun and got into a lot of trouble. And at the same time, my parents were sick and my mom was sick with what we found out was early onset Alzheimer's. And, well, after I'd been arrested for se several drinking charges, <laughs> um, my brother let me come live with him, and I moved in there and really started getting into personal development because I knew that I didn't want to live a life that ended up with me being unhealthy, like my parents. And one of the things that my dad really encouraged me to look into was actually meditation because he felt that that would be a beneficial thing for me from what he'd read. He thought that that would be a way for him, for me to deal with the stress of what was going on in our family. And that stuck with me and I just started thinking about it more and more. I tried out a few different techniques. I did centering prayer a lot. I tried that a lot and a few of like the ohms and the candles and things like that. And what I eventually found was that I have no self-discipline to do that on a regular basis. So I was looking for an even easier meditation technique, so I googled meditation technique, and what came up was TM. And 
And when I was reading it, I realized it was attached to this whole website called Maharshi University of Management. And I thought, wow, there's a university that has meditation in the curriculum. From my Vedic astrologer in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, where I'm from, uh, came up to me New Year's Eve 2007 going into 2008 he said you gotta check this out you know you're gonna totally dig this consciousness based education and, uh, you know natural food and all the stuff they get into there and um, so I checked it out and uh, I think I went down on January 12th and visited the place and then um, moved down there completely on January 21st so about three weeks later, after hearing about the place, I moved down there and signed up for the semester. Well, there's a, a school, a university in Fairfield, Iowa, Maharishi University of Management. And um, it's actually um, about 14 hours from here. <laughs> but I grew up in the Midwest, so I would go there frequently for courses. And uh, the nice thing about it is there are 2,000 people who meditate together there regularly. So when people do group meditation, it amplifies the inner experience, you know. So everybody's meditating together, they're generating that orderliness and coherence and peace and happiness in themselves, and then it becomes like a big tidal wave, and it sweeps over the whole environment. So you feel it in the environment. You can just feel yourself just sinking, and there's this massive group consciousness. Just The silence is just so powerful. And that, that's really nice. It's a very blissful atmosphere. Uh, the university itself is a really unique place because everybody, the teachers, the staff, and of course all the students, everybody meditates. And the whole curriculum is sort of centered around that. I mean, it's an accredited liberal arts university, but all the different disciplines are studied with reference to consciousness, human consciousness. And it's called consciousness-based education. And what's so revolutionary about it is that, for, for one thing, most other universities don't even have a clear-cut definition of what consciousness is. What, what drew me down there was a sustainable living degree, which um, to me was what was the trigger that really pulled me to anywhere, but especially to that university, uh, considering I felt the idea, the essence of sustainable living to me is, is bringing what might be a dream or a thought or a vision in a meditation down into the, the lower chakras or down to the earth, you know, into physical form, into activity. I thought that was one of the more. I mean, we have music, we have speech, we have art, we have poetry, but to build a straw bale house or to be off the grid with your energy or to be able to grow all your own vegetables and not have to get them shipped from Florida or California or Mexico yeah. is, to me, that's consciousness in, in the action. First meditation I had with TM, I felt this experience of diving inward and into this whole new world inside me that I had never experienced before, but I, I knew just from experiencing it that it's always been there. And it was transcendental. It was beyond the surface of my mind, beyond all the thoughts and sensations and emotions and beliefs and all that into a whole inner, I guess you could say, a space. But it was kind of beyond space and time. It was a state of just being, expansiveness. And it felt like coming back home, like this is my own self. You know, this is that reality that I've been reading about in, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson and the, the books of the East, like Yogananda. This is it. This is the experience of it. And I think that's what appealed to me about TM, Transcendental Meditation, that it wasn't a thing based on faith. It was all about direct experience. And so, you know, you practice it, you close your eyes, you feel your breathing slowing down, your body shifts into this other style of functioning, physiology, physiologically, and all those you know, studies they've done have, have, have verified that. So there, there's something very real that, that happens, and so you come out of it, and it's like, I remember the first time I opened my eyes coming out of meditation, one of the, the first things I noticed was everything looked so clear and crisp. And it's as if the, the whole texture of space was more rich and the fabric of it was more, more sharp. And, and it's like it changes your perception when you, when you dive in and your mind gets refreshed like that and you come out, everything, everything looks better, everything is better. Because inside, you know, it's like Blake said, you, you wash the windows of perception. 
And that's what happens when you dive within. The physiology gets this deep rest, and all the stresses get dissolved and all that. So it kind of changes your reality in a very good way. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, your training from the La Regine himself. That's not too much. No, it was, it was one of the best parts of my life, being able to study with a great master of meditation. And uh, it was very rigorous. He was very careful that, you know, his teachers were trained very thoroughly, that they know how to guide all the different kinds of people at different paces in meditation, that they really know this knowledge perfectly as it has been passed down for centuries and generations, that they don't change any part of it. So there was a lot of testing, a lot of, um, you know, learning how to teach this technique. And also, it was, he was such an embodiment of consciousness and enlightenment himself. He didn't want followers. He wanted people to follow their own progress. So he didn't want devotees that would be attached to him and dependent on him. He wanted to, you know, train teachers that understood this knowledge, could give it out, and, and allow other people to follow their progress in their own development of consciousness. So, he was a great, humble um, man, and very intelligent, and very blissful, and he never slept. So he was just always, you know, so vibrant and creative. People had to, uh, you know, work with him in shifts to keep up with him. So he was a great example of what he was teaching, and he was a great uh, maker of, you know, strong people yeah. that could go out and teach. I heard uh, many stories uh, about you about your capability of work, about your vision. Uh, most of these stories uh, come to hinting, if not saying, uh, if, if not saying clearly, that you have divine powers. Have you <laughs> such powers? Everyone has divine powers. <laughs> Physics has found out that the vacuum state, which is the state of least excitation, is present in all the excited states. So there is some deep silence which is present in all activity of the universe. And that silence is the source of all activity, it is the home of all the laws of nature, it's the home of all knowledge. So some people call that silence, that lively silence, the basis of our life, some people call it divine. So that divine state of least excitation present in all the excited states. So divine power is present everywhere. So everyone should feel uh, he is divine and he has divine power. Maharshi has this whole theory of getting like the square root of 1% of the population would be like doing doing these advanced like meditations would rate basically radiate like a sun you know light enough to help everybody else yeah. whether they, they could be completely blind to the fact it's not like you're in some kind of trance where you're cut off from the world you're settled and you're aware and you're awake but that that term unboundedness I think is a good word to describe it because you, you feel like any boundaries to your mind, any restrictedness, it starts to fall away during meditation and you just feel this great expansiveness. And then there's moments where there's just perfect silence and there's nothing there except you. And that means not just your thoughts or your memories, you've gone beyond that, but who you really are, that timeless, non-changing value of just pure being. And it feels really good. It's very blissful. There's an ancient work of, of Eastern philosophy called the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, it describes the, the experience. And uh, it says that when the mind goes beyond all mental impulses, all levels of activity, then you're experiencing your own true self. And it's a state of complete, absolute self-knowledge. And that's, that's kind of what it feels like. You're just knowing yourself. Most well, skeptics, they just don't have the full picture yet. And um, you can say anything about your experience in meditation, but 
What really proves whether meditation is working or whether it's effective is by looking at what happens in the brain and in the body when a person sits to meditate, because that's science. And if you see that the brain waves are changing, they're becoming more powerful, if you see that the breath rate is being reduced and um, heart rate is reduced and you know, you measure stress hormones, there's a lot of measurements that show what state of mind you're in. So I would tell a skeptic to look at the science behind it and be sure that it's good science. It's uh, a study that's been a peer-reviewed study published in a reputable journal done by you know, independent um, scientists. And then, you know, see, you know, if they feel meditation has any value. Yeah, when people learn TM who are very, very skeptical about it all, maybe they learn because some friend has been bugging them to learn, so they're just going to learn to get this guy off their back. So they start meditating, maybe even to prove that it doesn't work. It works for them just as good as it does for anybody else, because it's not a thing where you have to believe in it for it to work. You just do it. It's a mechanical process. It's kind of like taking a bath. You take a bath, even if you don't believe in taking a bath, if some of your friends throw you in the shower and you come out, you're going to be clean, you're going to be fresh, you're going to smell better, no matter what your philosophical ideas are about taking a bath, because it's just a natural phenomenon, it works. TM's like that, it's like taking a mental bath. You believe in it, you don't, it doesn't matter. You dive within, you practice this technique, the system settles down, breathing slows down, you get that deep rest, mind and body get rejuvenated, you come out, you're going to feel better. So. To me, it's all on that level. It's a very real thing, and it's not about faith. Although, it's, you know, faith is nice. You know, if a person doesn't believe it's going to do something for them, they probably won't even learn it or practice it. But that's, that's about as far as faith goes with this whole thing. My girlfriend and I are here. We'd really like to, to see 5,000 people in this town doing it. Not, not, in a, not in like a, you know, Bible thumping sort of way or anything like that. Or like a, in this case, it would be the Vaid thumping, you know, or anything like that, you know. But we just want world peace and we want consciousness and throughout the globe and that'd be the way to do it. You know, I liked it and I uh, decided to become a teacher. Went off to teacher training, studied with Marishi just like my wife Jeannie did. And uh, ended up coming back to Asheville for a few years teaching here. We had a TM center down on Wall Street back then. And then I went off to back to college and I taught around the world, went in different countries, taught meditation and uh, ended up coming back here to Asheville in the past few years. Something was kind of calling me back to the mountains. I love it here. And so we, while we were here, we just thought we should uh, start teaching TM like we've always done, wherever we've been. And uh, so we opened up this center. There had there'd been a center here before. In fact, there's always been a TM center in Asheville since uh, about 1970. There's always been people teaching TM here. Good. It's been a good town for meditation. To me, it's not about getting everybody to do TM, but it's not getting everybody to do Buddhist meditation or Zen meditation either. It's not about getting everybody to do Reiki. It's not about getting everybody to do, you know, go to church on Sunday, you know, but it's getting everybody to do one of those things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do something that connects you to, like, God. That's all I say. To the spirit, whatever you want to call it. Great spirit, the universe. Maya, whatever it is, you know, just do something that connects you to that and ideally do it with people, a community. I just, at this particular point in my life, it's really, really crazy to think um, what what my life would be like without meditating. It's, it's something that I will always stick with. I mean, I started 40 years ago and I know it's something I'll always have with me for the rest of my life. So, uh, however, you know, it goes here in Asheville, it'll keep growing.